Welcome to The Drummer and the Great Mountain, a podcast where we share effective tips and practices for working with adults ADD, ADHD in a natural, effective way without the use of medications. Each episode, join me, your host, Batman Saram, along with the author of The Drummer and the Great Mountain, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Join Michael and myself in an interactive discussion of sharing our stories as we journey together in transforming what can be the gift of being what we call hunter types. This podcast is intended to be your audio companion to the book written by Michael, who joins me each episode where we both will strive to foster dialogue, give you our personal insights, and share both of our experiences on this similar path that we are all on. Our intention and hope is that along with the book, this podcast gives you an additional perspective as you listen to us delve deeper into each chapter of the book to give you even more tools to go along with what it is that you are reading. Visit us at drummerandthegreatmountain.com to purchase the book and look for more tools, tips, and updates, as well as giving us feedback on this podcast. Join our growing global community of creative types, entrepreneurs, and out-of-the-box thinkers on our shared journey. Welcome to the Drummer in the Great Mountain podcast. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. I'm your host, Michael Joseph Ferguson. Happy 2021. I hope you are all are safe and healthy. I know it's been a little crazy this last week, but uh, we're going to start off the year right and get it going in a good direction. So on today's podcast episode, we are going to be talking about the top 15 tips for thriving in 2021 as a hunter type. So these are going to be about how you get yourself going in a good direction, break up some old patterns that you may be stuck in right now, kind of like a menu item to focus on what could be beneficial, um, shedding some bad patterns from 2020 that may have been accrued through stress and uh, self-medication of some sort, just keeping yourself from getting going off the cliff. I think many of us, uh, maybe a, a, the early part of COVID were able to manage, but as the year wore on, I think it took its toll on a lot of us in terms of our inspiration, our health. Um, we may have slid back into old patterns that were maybe not the healthiest. So this is a really good time for you to kick the year off right, break up the patterns, and I'm hoping that these tips, these top 15 tips for thriving in 2021, can really help you, um, just remind you of what could be potentially helpful right now uh, and get your year going in a good direction. So just one quick announcement, our next Alive Online workshop starts January 23rd. So this is a four-week workshop. It will be on Saturdays, and it covers the four key areas us hunter types most need support with. So first session will be life visioning and goal setting. Second session will be time management. Third session will be developing a wellness plan. And the fourth session will be creating good support systems. So if you'd like to learn more, go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash workshop. That's drummerinthegreatmountain forward slash workshop. Okay, so what I've done is I've compiled uh, what I think are the top 15 tips that could really help you get your year off in a good direction uh, for 2021 as hunter types. Uh, and what I did was I looked through previous, I think we have we did this two years ago, I looked through some of those, uh, and I also updated this a bit. Um, and I'm also referencing and sending you to other podcast episodes so that I'm just going to give you like, this is sort of a, a menu item. So these are menu items that you can kind of check off your list and say, okay, am I doing that? Am I doing that? Am I doing that? And then I'm going to point you to different, different episodes if you feel like that tip's really important to you and you want to go deeper into it. Okay, so on to tip number one. So this is in the category of life visioning and goal setting. So tip one is to pick one inspiring goal for yourself for 2021 and go after it. So my suggestion is make it inspiring enough, make it a big enough goal that it's going to get you up and going, but not so big that you can accomplish it before the end of the year. So those are the criteria. So, and the thing to think about as a hunter type is we are 
Our fuel is inspiration. We are not practically driven in case you haven't figured it out yet. (laughs) So if someone says, well, practically speaking, you should be doing this, that's not something that's going to motivate a hunter type. We don't work that way. We need something that gets us fired up and inspired, and and then surprisingly focus, inspiration, energy comes roaring in. Whereas before you were just feeling flat and blah. And then all of a sudden you get like a a hit of like, oh, I could do that. And then the energy just starts burning and you can focus and it gets you moving. Uh, And that's what we need. It's because us hunter types tend to go into these. When we go into a funk, it's usually we're just blah. We're like kind of stuck in patterns where we're just, there's no motivation to do anything. We procrastinate. That's it. But on the flip side of that, when we're inspired, there's no stopping us. So tip number one, pick one inspiring goal for yourself and go for it. And I want you to use that goal. Think about if you're, as you're listening to this podcast, hit pause, think about that for a second. See if you can get a little glimmer of something that pops in. Maybe it's a creative project. Maybe it's an entrepreneurial project. Maybe it's a health goal that you have. And then come back and then Take that inspiration and think about how the rest of these tips apply in supporting you in achieving that goal. So basically everything else I'm going to talk about are the ways in which you can more effectively achieve that particular goal. So tip number one, pick one inspiring goal and go after it. Tip number two, nurture your talents. So the first order of business is knowing what you're talented at. We all have it, especially hunter types. I feel like we, many of us have been endowed with many talents. So uh, I want to reference episode 70, which is lean on your strengths. Go check that episode out if this feels like a a tip that you want to like dig into deeper. But the questions to ask yourself are, what are your talents? What are you talented at? What do you you have innate skill with? Uh, What does it look like to make it a part of your weekly schedule? So if there's something you're good at, maybe you're a musician, you're an artist, or you have been in the past and you feel like you need to revamp that particular talent and that skill set, then what does it look like for you to make this a part of your weekly schedule? After that, think about what support do you need to make this happen? Do you need to meet with other people? Like right now, still with COVID, a lot of us are are still on some form of lockdown. Uh, Join it. Can you join a group? Can you reach out to a friend who's also similarly, they may have a a similar goal, whether it may be a fellow musician, a fellow artist, fellow entrepreneur. How do you get the support you need to make nurturing this talent a part of your weekly schedule locked in? locked in so that you have other support other than your own willpower. So your willpower is limited. So when you schedule things with other people, surprisingly, you'll do it more often than if you were just relying on your own willpower. And then the last question to ask yourself in terms of nurturing your talents is what's the next milestone? Set a milestone for yourself. What's the next goal that you want to achieve? What's the next plateau? Set a a milestone for yourself. What's the next marker for yourself? So if you're a musician, maybe it is learning a song and being able to play it really well. Or it's writing... Uh, two more songs for like, if that's you, if you're a musician, then maybe that's it. Or if you're an artist, maybe the goal is to learn a new technique. Uh, that could be the next milestone. It could be completing a course, uh, the, an online course that you you know, picked for yourself. Whatever it is, set a milestone and move towards it. Okay, so that's tip number two: nurturing your talents. Um, the next set of uh, tips are going to be in the realm of health. And so tip number three is optimize your health routine. You know what I'm going to say. I say it over and over because I've been doing this. I've been coaching since 2007. It's the thing that makes the most difference as hunter types for the long haul. It's not easy, but you need to do it. Daily cardio routine is what I would recommend. As I've moved on, I've just come to daily is the best way to do it for us hunter types. So some form of cardio, start with walking. If you need to walk first, if you're not um, in, if you have either uh, health issues that keep you from doing more uh, extensive cardio routines, then start with walking and just just set milestones for yourself. How far am I going to go today? Maybe you extend it each day so you get a little farther. Um, Ideally, you start moving into a cardio routine where you're actually 
getting your heart rate going. Uh, that could be something as simple as jumping jacks. It could be jogging. Uh, there's a million ways that you can do cardio. My recommendation is 10 to 15 minutes a day minimum. Anyone, most of us can do that. So some form of cardio, be creative, 10 to 15 minutes a day. If you need to start with walking, but I want to encourage you, if you have, if you're healthy enough to do it, move towards getting your heart rate up. It's the number one tip for us hunter types in terms of consistent mental clarity and life transformation, which I've seen over and over again when I work with people. Start it, getting a daily cardio routine, n- number one health suggestion, bar none for us hunter types. So uh, especially if you are stuck in some bad patterns right now and you're not eating really well and you're kind of lethargic in the morning, break up the pattern. And my suggestion is one tip is to get out first thing in the morning. Uh, Even if it's cold, see if you can go for a short walk. So get up uh, as quickly as you can, get yourself up and out of the house. What that does is it breaks your pattern up and you will find Uh, that your day will probably go better just by doing that. Even if you went out for five minutes, just because you're accosted with the outside world, the outside world floods in, especially if it's a little chilly, it's going to wake you up. And then the rest of your day may go a bit better. So if you're stuck in a rut right now, the simple solution would be get up and get yourself out of the house as quickly as possible, if you can, unless it's like 30 degrees below and you can't do it, most of you can do it. Um, Okay, and then I'd say the second tip here in terms of optimizing your health routine is the nutrition upgrade. So that's replacing the artificial ingredients, so removing them out of your diet. So that's the the artificial flavorings, the preservatives. Look at the wrappers. Look at the, the nutrition list on the back of things that you're eating. Get rid of those things that are the artificial, especially the colorings and the preservatives. Those, those are proven to exacerbate ADHD symptoms. And what you're looking for, simply put, is a healthy, higher protein, low carb diet where you've reduced, especially the refined sugars, ideally eliminating them from your diet. Um, connected to that, I would say as a whole, eliminating alcohol is probably a good idea, especially if it's become a crutch for you over the past few months as a stress reduction technique. It's a bad stress reduction technique. It's not a good one. So if you can, that really goes in line with the daily cardio. When you start to up your cardio, and especially for reducing or eliminating alcohol, that's a good that's a good balance. So the cardio will balance you out a little bit, get your brain chemistry going in a good direction. So what I've seen with hunter types is alcohol is one of the things when I'm working with people, I can usually tell within a few minutes if they're drinking alcohol or not. It's that pronounced uh, because it has such an impact on, it's like, a, in some ways it's like a big dose of sugar. So it's really affecting um, that part of your, uh, your metabolism. And uh, I just see it over and over again that when people start to eliminate al- alcohol and they have challenges with, uh, you know, hi- hyperactivity or distraction or um, they improve. And depending on where you are with your journey with alcohol, you may need to reach out for support. I'm telling you, you will not regret it. I've never heard anyone come to me and say, you know, I reduced or eliminated alcohol as a result of my coaching and said it was a bad idea. No one's ever said that. No one's ever said I regret uh, upping my cardio routine. That's never happened. It's always been a positive thing. Um, And then connected with Nutrition Upgrade is uh, start cooking. Get inspired. Get creative about your cooking process. Find things that you really want to eat. Um, you may want to pick up something like an Instapot or an air fryer or something that's going to kind of like some new gadget that maybe gets you a little inspired with it. Maybe you want to really get into juicing and that's going to be part of your routine. Whatever it is, what you're aiming for is a healthy, higher protein, low carb diet where you've reduced or eliminated refined sugars, uh, replaced the artificials with healthier ingredients and potentially eliminate alcohol and to at least test it out test this stuff out for a month, say, okay, well, I'm not going to do this forever, but let's aim for from now until this time next month, test out these, these routines in terms of the cardio and the nutrition upgrade, and then see where you just prove it to yourself, whether or not it works. Tip number four is 
dial in good sleep hygiene. If you're not getting enough sleep, you are not giving your brain chemistry the reboot it needs for you to focus and feel clear and awake. So I'm not going to go too much into that. I did a whole episode on it uh, where I went to very granular detail on tips on this. So go to episode 62 on sleep and you'll get all the information you need on sleep and ADHD and some, I think, uh, I may update that at some point, but I think all those tips are solid and very much usable for you right now. So if you have challenges with sleep, which many of us hunter types do, check that episode out, episode 62. Okay, so next category is time management. So tip number five is commit to using one calendar. One calendar. Whenever you're putting an event that you need to be reminded of, you find one place to do it. So you have pretty much two options on this. Either one, you have a paper planner. So you have a plan like which is something you're going to carry with you wherever you go. It's you, you know just wherever you're you're at, you have your planner. Ideally, if you have a paper planner, go for the weekly pages. So uh, when you open it up, it's uh, the entire week on the left and right side of the page. Uh, versus uh, one page per day. That's what I find for most hunter types works best with some a section in the back of the planner for lots of blank pages so you can write things down. Or two is that you basically have online calendar like uh, Google Calendar or some other calendar that's synced across all your devices, your phone, uh, your laptop, everything. It's all one place and that's where you're putting it. As time has gone on, I'm seeing more and more people are just dialing this in just as a necessity of life. But if you find yourself writing events in, if, or you don't use a calendar at all, start using a calendar. And if you are using and, and using one, you have like multiple places where you write them down, commit to consolidating to one calendar. Okay, time management tip. Uh, so we're at tip number six. Uh, buy a spiral bound sketchbook. So I'll put a link in the description for this. Uh, I like the Strathmore um, spiral bound sketchbook. Basically, this is just a spiral bound um, sketchbook, which is blank. There's nothing in it. There's no lines. Uh, and it's spiral bound, so you can open it up flat. And I think the one I use is five and a half by eight is the size five and a half by eight and a half, something like that. Look at, look in the description. It's a good size. Carry it with you. Stick a little pen in there and just go day by day. And what you can do with that is you can journal, you can mind map, and you can also write your actions out for the day and scratch them off. I can't stress how important that is. As a hunter type, you need to write things down or use the computer to flesh out what needs to happen next. Otherwise, everything floods together. We get that thing called flooding where everything just gets completely overwhelming and then we just procrastinate. So the antidote to that is to have a good skill set of writing things down and processing through things by either through writing on the computer or writing by hand. And sketchbook's really helpful for that. And you can also mind map. And you can also use this with the digital camera. So if you got Google Calendar, you don't have to use the sketchbook as your calendar, and I wouldn't recommend it. This is really for okay, where am I at today? And you just you if you're stuck in the moment with whatever you're you're you know you're overwhelmed by something, you can use that to journal, and you basically just go in chronological order. Don't section it into different sections. Just go write the date, start writing for whatever it's going on that day. And then when you're done, go to a new page, write the date, and just continue. So just chronologically use your sketchbook. And what's nice is, as you've uh, as time goes on, if you decide to do this, you get this really beautiful uh, catalog of all of your life that you can go back to over time. I can look over at my uh, bookshelf and I see. 50, maybe something like that of sketchbooks that I can go back and look at, okay, what was going on at that part of my life? And I can, even if it's just like action items that I wrote for that day, I still kind of get a sense of like, oh, that's what was going on then. So it becomes a really, it becomes like a, an archive of your life that's tangible versus just on the computer. So, um, Tip number six is buy a spiral bound sketchbook. So not a notebook, unless you really want the lines, then use the lines. But I find for many of us having no lines is uh, you have more options available to you. Okay, moving on to tip number seven, also in the time management category, recognize what times of day you're best suited to do mundane tasks. 
So there's certain times a day that we're more able to do those things that feel most overwhelming to us. Uh, and I want to point you to the uh, episode 64, which is Mastering Overwhelming and Mundane Tasks. Check that particular podcast out. I go very in detail about how to work with them. But the key is knowing what time of day. So for most of us, this is mid-morning to early afternoon. That's the window that we're most able to do mundane tasks because of just the dopamine cycle and just how we're wired. That over as a general rule of thumb, mid morning to early afternoon is is usually the best time to schedule mundane tasks. So how you utilize this is if you think, oh, okay, well I'll do that paperwork or the taxes about six p.m. or seven p.m. You're setting yourself up for failure. It's going to be exponentially harder than if you had just said, okay, no, no, I'm going to schedule this mid morning to early afternoon. And that might not be your window. Maybe your window based on your sleep schedule is different. Maybe it's towards the afternoon. Uh, whatever it is, start to pay attention to when, what time of day you're most able to sit down and do like paperwork or things that just feel really overwhelming to you that you typically procrastinate and start to use that window to schedule your mundane tasks. Okay, tip number eight, also in time management, uh, work in sprints. So set, break your day up into a series of shorter sprints. Uh, and I just did a podcast on this, uh, episode 77, Sprint Then Rest. Check that one out. I go into detail on ways of scheduling your day this way. And basically, it's it, I think the general platform is something like the Pomodoro Technique, where you do 25 minutes on and you take a five-minute break. Uh, find your groove. For me, that's I usually like more like 45 minutes to an hour and then take a longer break. Whatever it is, schedule your day in a series of sprints versus just having an, an unstructured day where you just feel like, okay, I'm just going to do the next thing. Okay, what's the next thing here? Okay. And it's just this blur and you have no idea when you're stopping or starting again. You don't know what you're accomplishing or you're not accomplishing. Maybe you stop and do one thing and then you do that for five minutes and you go off to something else and you come back. That's just a recipe for low self-esteem, frustration, and overwhelm. So work in sprints. Split your day up into smaller sprints as well as plan your day in the beginning of the day. Maybe you, you go out and you go for a walk, you come back and you write out your day and you just say sprint number one, this is what I'm doing. Sprint number two, this is what I'm doing. And see if you can even break that up into categories, depending on your schedules. Depends on, on maybe your work has really created a structure for yourself that you don't have to worry as much about it. But most of us have a uh, pretty free reign of our schedule in one way, shape, or form within the confines of our work. So organize your tasks in series of sprints, and it will definitely improve your productivity and reduce your overwhelm. Tip number nine, also in the category of time management, break down bigger tasks into smaller tasks. So if you are not doing this, you will be procrastinating. This is why we procrastinate. We do things like we write down on our schedule, do taxes. Like so to me, that's like the guarantee that you're going to procrastinate that. The alternative is you sit down and you write out okay, what, what are the things I need to accomplish today? And you maybe say, okay, first thing I need to do is assemble the paperwork. Okay, and you might even want to break that down into uh, assemble paperwork for uh, the first six months or under this category. And you start to build up a list of very specific action items for yourself so that when you sit down, you have a list of four or five things that you know you need to do and they're clearly defined. Now, for many hunter types, this is really difficult. So this goes back to the earlier tip of schedule mundane tasks at your optimum time. So mid morning to early afternoon, maybe after you've exercised, but take that time to, to break down the bigger tasks into smaller tasks. Don't be afraid to reach out for support, to ask someone to say, hey, I need to just run this by you for five minutes. If you've got some people in your life, you can do that or coworkers, all the better. We all need it. It is not a source of shame. Highly productive people do this. So have no shame in asking for support and talking through task lists if you need to. So uh, tip number nine, break down bigger tasks into smaller tasks to prevent procrastination. 
Tip number 10, also time management related, make smaller time commitments. So many of us don't start something because we feel like we have to do it for ever. And so because of it, we procrastinate or we just don't do it at all. So for example, as I mentioned earlier with the the health um, challenge to you, commit to doing a month or commit to doing a week. See if you can break things down into a small time frame where you can test it out. So um, if maybe it's a class that you want to take online, maybe there's a way you can test the class out instead of going, oh, well, that's going to be six months or a year. And that just sounds overwhelming. So you don't pursue it. So the trick is, do your best to take small, make smaller time commitments so you can test things out. You will more likely move towards them when you feel like it's not something you have to do forever. This is also really helpful when you're hiring someone as a consultant. Many people either resist doing that or they feel like once they committed to something, they, they, they're committed forever and so they don't do it. Or they, they have a bad experience because they feel awkward about uh, calling the person and say, well, this is not quite working out. And so they don't reach out to a life coach or they don't reach out to uh, a potential um some kind of health practitioner that may be able to support them because we feel like it's, oh, this will go forever and ever. And how am I going to afford that? When if you just think in terms of a small time commitment, let's test this out for a month. Let's see how it goes. Maybe you're partnering with someone on a project. Don't make an indefinite commitment. Set, set a small time commitment and see if it works. And if it works, great. Keep doing it. If it doesn't work, you're not in an awkward situation. So again, this is kind of like time management. It's also just interaction with others. Um, get comfortable with making smaller time commitments to test things out. Tip number 11, also in time management, utilize mind mapping. It is one of the great tools that we have as hunter types is mind mapping. It is the tool that helps us break things down, containerize, get things out of our head and onto a sheet of paper or onto a mind map so that we can plan our day. So it goes back into to what I was saying before about breaking tasks down to smaller tasks. Mind mapping is excellent for that. It is also just great in getting things out of your head when you're feeling overwhelmed and everything's flooding together. It's a way of you visually looking at a sheet of paper or a a mind map on a computer and just getting it all out of your head so you can see it. So once things are overwhelming when when they're all just jumbled together, as soon as you can see them in front of you and they're contained, then usually the stress level goes down and then you see a way forward. So uh, I'm not going to go into how to mind map here. Uh, I want to point you to episode 54, which is called Containerizing Your Life Through Mind Mapping and Other Tools. Start there. Um, all of our workshops, we talk about mind mapping and I go into uh, I do tutorials on it. So if you're interested, you might want to check those out, um, the upcoming Alive workshop or any of our groups that we do. I usually go through and do an example of mind mapping as a way of planning your day. So tip number 11, utilize mind mapping. And last of the time management tips, tip number 12, is replace the distractions. So if you find that you have a list of distractions that are just pulling you down, uh, then you want to replace those with healthier habits instead of just eliminating them, which is a lot harder. So it's much easier to just replace it with something else versus like you just use your willpower to grind through stop to stop doing it. So this goes into our tendency as hunter types to get caught by stimuli. So that could be screen time, that could be the news, that could be gaming, that could be worry and anxiety, that could be a habit of complaining. So I'll give you some examples. So screen time, all of us struggle with this. I still struggle with this too, uh, especially at certain times. When I, I, it's definitely something I've got to watch and I'm, I have to be on top of it. So instead of screen time, that's phone, tablet, whatever, uh, TV, uh, replace it with things like learning to play an instrument. That's exciting. That's life-changing. Why not do that instead? Learn or create art. Take a course. Take an online course. Build up a portfolio of things that you, you're you proud of. Write. If you're a writer, write, or you've been wanting to go into a writing project, Use the time to do that. Maybe join a group online that supports you because writing's really hard to do by yourself. But with a group, you might get the extra support you need. Do replace screen time with creativity. 
That's the recommendation. Um, so another option would be like, so to replace a distraction with something more positive, if it's the news that you've been distracted with, it's something I've definitely been distracted with the last couple of weeks. If you're in the United States, you know why, um, replace the news with inspirational talks, audiobooks, podcasts, things that are at least going to move your brain going, brain going in a good direction. So obviously we all need to keep up with what's going on in the world. Understandable, but not every single second of the day. So see which, especially starting off in 2021 now, see if you can replace, uh, if you find yourself checking the news every five minutes, see if you can replace it with inspirational talks, audiobooks, podcasts, something that's going to get your head going in a good direction. Um, gaming and worry, if those are things that are distracting or overwhelming you, replace them with exercise. See if you can get out and exercise and just shed the anxiety, shed the worry, or gaming, if that's your thing, if, if, if again, that kind of goes into screen time, see if you can replace some of that with some exercise. Get yourself out, move, move your body, get some fresh air into your body. It's going to, it's also highly stimulating and it's also going to move you in a really good direction. And if it's complaining, many of us complain way too much. And we've, if we just pay attention, we'll see what comes out of our mouth is like, oh, you know, this is happening or I, I can't get this going. Or if you're finding yourself doing that, replace it with the practice of gratitude. So when you think to complain about something, stop yourself and say, what am I grateful for in this moment? and break the pattern. Complaining is a terrible planet pattern. It doesn't get you anywhere. There's no benefits from it. Use the the cue of what you're complaining about to, to ask yourself, what do you want to do? How are you going to change this? Um, but just complaining, it's, it doesn't help you. It definitely doesn't help the people around you. So if you find yourself in that stuck in that habit, uh, find a nice replacement. Gratitude practice being probably the number one. Okay, next category is mindfulness. So I've got two tips in this category. Tip number 13 is practice mindfulness and self-awareness. So that's a that's a general big tip, but I want to go into some specifics on it. I want to give you some episodes to check out. So uh, episode 71, I did on mindfulness. So mindfulness, a lot of what we're even talking about now, as we've talked about the whole episode, is mindfulness, becoming aware of what's happening in the moment. And there's a ton of different practices that can be helpful in terms of mindfulness. So as, as a, a nice broad introduction to that, I would uh, recommend you check out episode 71 on mindfulness. Also, meditation getting at least one meditation practice under your belt that you feel uh, comfortable with and that really supports you in quieting your mind and building your ability to focus. Meditation is the way you build mindfulness. It's like a muscle. It's like weightlifting. When you have a good meditation practice, you are more likely to do all the other things that I just said. So, uh, you know, start with exercise, but then move towards having some kind of meditation practice. You're just building those muscles so that when you start to feel like, oh, I'm going to go back to that really bad pattern that I know is not good for me. If you have, if you have good exercise routine and a good meditation practice, you're far less likely to do so. Uh, so, um, episode 74, the med meditation episode, there's lots of really good tips there. Uh, also under the practicing mindfulness and self-awareness, uh, all, become aware of the all or nothing tendency that many of us hunter types have. Uh, and I would, we just did a whole podcast on that episode 78. It is a very common tendency for us hunter types to be either I'm all in or I'm just completely not doing it at all. And that also leads to us stopping things before we complete them. So if you find that that is a tendency that you have, because all of us have it, then check out episode 78. I go into great detail on what it is and also how to transform it. And then the last two episodes to check out would be the gratitude practice episode. That's episode 68. Um, I go into detail on how to use gratitudes 
as a mindfulness practice to to transform your mood, but also to get you moving in a good direction. It's life trend. There's studies that have been done on people that do a regular gratitude practice, and as a whole, they're more productive and they have a higher sense of well being. So you need if you're wondering what practices to integrate into your life this year gratitude is top of the list. So check out episode 68. And then the last, uh, under the the heading of practicing mindfulness and self-awareness, journaling is one of our great tools to do so. So going back to having some kind of um, sketchbook that you bring around with you so you can journal in, in it. Um, check out episode 65. I go into great detail on journaling. I also talk about how to use the the practice of nonviolent communication and needs awareness in journaling. That So this is really a tool to help you get unstuck when you find yourself ruminating on things that are just taking you down or you feel like you're just procrastinating or you're spinning on something over and over again. Journaling is such a good tool in your toolkit to prevent yourself from staying stuck. So check out episode 65 on journaling. There's also a really good spread uh, worksheet with that that you can download for free. So uh, check out that uh, episode. Journaling episode. 65. And moving also under the mindfulness category, tip number 14, start your day with inspiration. So my high recommendation for you going into 2021, especially if you've just been consuming the news and all the negativity, which is real, it's like, it's not fake, it's it's a real thing. But if we're just focusing on all the time, we just get completely overwhelmed. So the tip is start your day with inspiration. Find a podcast, an audiobook, some kind of inspirational talk. Pick up, find some people that you really like that really fire you up and listen to them when you get up in the morning. So if you want to combine this with the earlier tip of just getting up and getting out first thing in the morning, do that. Get your headphones on, get some a good talk going go outside, get some fresh air. It is the best way to get your day going in the morning, especially if you're stuck in a rut right now. So tip number 14 is start your day with inspiration. And finally, tip number 15, this is under the category of support. It is a general tip and it's basically develop the skill of reaching out for support. So if you find yourself feeling like you have to do everything yourself and that you are somehow smaller because you're reaching out for support, you need to reach, you need to transform that pattern because we all need support. We are interdependent. That's how we're wired as humans. It is not natural for us to try to do things all by ourselves. So uh, that's, that kind of support might look like reaching out to get a life coach. It could be joining a, a group, some kind of online support group that supports you in any of the categories that we've talked about up until now. It could also mean taking a class. Um, f- whatever support you're needing, and I, I, there's just so many different categories, but it's you know within time management or just uh, support with ADD challenges to begin with, like ma- find a good support group, join it, stay connected, Build a community around you to support you in the things that you care about. Also, when you're developed, let's say you're really wanting to develop a particular skill set, then take a class. Don't think you can just do it by yourself, especially like creative, like art classes. If you're really into art or entrepreneuring and you find yourself not following through in the things that you really care about, then reach out, get support, join a group get a class, find some way to get the support around you so that there's some kind of structure outside of yourself. Because the hardest thing is to do it all on your own willpower. There's We have such little willpower as humans to begin with. And if you're already stuck in a rut, you have to assume that your willpower is probably pretty low. And so you want to, at least in the interim, build a support structure around you of a class or some kind of consultant that works with you. And maybe that for health wise, maybe you're having a hard time doing cardio, get yourself a trainer. Uh, Even if it's online, maybe you just have a trainer that you tune into and you just do it through Zoom right now with COVID. But whatever it is, the big tip is develop the skill set of reaching out for support when you need it. Okay, so that's the top 15 tips for thriving in 2021. I'm going to run through those one more time so you have the list all in one spot. So tip number one is pick 
one inspiring goal and go after it. Tip number two, nurture your talents. And I want to reference Lean on Your Strengths podcast episode number 70. Uh, Tip number three, optimize your health routine. So that's daily cardio exercise and optimizing your nutrition. Tip number four, dial in good sleep hygiene and check out episode number 62. Tip number five, commit to using one calendar. Tip number six, buy a spiral bound sketchbook. Tip number seven, recognize what times of day are best suited to do mundane tasks. Tip number eight, work in sprints. And I want to reference episode 77, Sprint Then Rest. Check that out for more info on working in sprints. Tip number nine, break it down. Tip number 10, make smaller time commitments. Tip number 11, utilize mind mapping. And I want to reference episode 54, containerizing your life through mind mapping and other tools. Tip number 12, replace the distractions. Tip number 13, practice mindfulness and self-awareness. There's a number of episodes here to check out. So episode 74, meditation. Episode 71, mindfulness. Episode 78, all or nothing. Episode 68, gratitude practice. And episode 65, journaling. Tip number 14 is start your day with inspiration. And finally, tip number 15 is develop the skill set of reaching out for support. So I hope that was helpful to you. And I want to wish you a really powerfully wonderful 2021. I intend all of you really thrive this year, and I hope those tips are helpful to you. If you would like to join us in the upcoming Alive Online Workshop, go to drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash workshop for more information. And until next time, be well. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like to learn more about the book, The Drummer in the Great Mountain, visit drummerinthegreatmountain.com. To join us on social media, click the links at the top of the homepage. Help us spread the word. We're a small press and reviews really help. If you've been enjoying the podcast or the book, consider writing a review on iTunes, Amazon, Goodreads, or your podcast app. If you're new to the podcast and want to quickly get up to speed on the concepts we discuss, check out our free five-day mini course. Visit drummerinthegreatmountain.com forward slash mini course. If there's a topic you'd like us to cover on future episodes, we'd love to hear from you. Please send us an email at info at drummerinthegreatmountain.com.